Welcome. You are listening to the Be A Better Being podcast hosted by Michelle Zellner and Sasha Bershide. Michelle and Sasha are here to give you information and inspiration to help you live your healthiest, happiest lives. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoy the show. Greetings. Thank you for tuning in to the Be A Better Being podcast. I am Michelle Zellner, your host. I am solo without my podcast co-host today. But it's a Happy New Year version, and I just want to talk to you a little bit about how to set yourself up for the most full and fulfilling 2024. If you have listened to me even for just a minute, you know I'm a big fan of a vision board. And yes, it is that time to start thinking about your vision board if you have not already. National Vision Boarding Day is Saturday, January 13th, and I am going to say I'm super proud of myself for having my act together in time to actually host the virtual vision board workshop on National Vision Boarding Day. So we'll have notes in the show notes on how to register for that, but I want to just talk a little bit about how to go through a process, okay? Now, whether it's a resolution or you are a goal setter or you do something like make a vision board, the idea is you actually have to then put some work into it, right? And we are here early in the year. In fact, when this episode airs on January 8th, the Monday after New Year's is the biggest day for the gym, for people going on a diet, for everybody being super gung-ho about doing things differently. And we all start out with these great ideas, this big grand, okay, I'm going to eat better. I'm going to exercise more. I'm going to get more sleep. I'm going to put my phone down. I'm going to get out of debt. And then it's like the middle of January, early February, and like, oh, well, guess that didn't work out. So if you've been down that road before, I am here to tell you there is a different way. I promise you. And so perhaps it's time for a resolution revolution. Maybe you're going to decide a new approach to all of this would be beneficial. And for me, this process really starts with identifying what is important to me, right? So if you haven't sat down and just put some words on paper, the things that you want to achieve, the priorities in your life, the values that you hold, get some clarity, put real words on paper, because when you can see them in front of you, you can then determine how you're going to live your life, right? What you're going to spend your time, your money, and your energy on. We generally should be spending time, money, and energy on things that are important to us, but if we're not intentional about it, we let life kind of take over. We're spending these things mindlessly, haphazardly, impulsively, then all of a sudden it's December and you're like, but wait, where did the year go? But wait, I didn't do that. But wait, I was supposed to achieve this. What happened? Well, what happened was you probably didn't outline the plan to help you be successful. So starting from scratch, rewind. And in fact, fast forward, fast forward, December 31st, 2024. You are sitting, thinking about the year you just had. How do you want to feel? Where would you like your health to be? Physical, mental, and emotional health. What would you like that to be? Your finances. Where would you like those to be? The accomplishments. What what accomplishments can we be celebrating on December 31st, 2024? The experiences that you had. What would you like to have done? Get those things out on paper as well. That's the finish line, right? And you have between now and then to get either to the finish line or at least closer to the finish line. So start with how you want to finish. Create that picture. I'll call it a vision. If you want to make a vision board, it's great. We have a visual representation of what we just decided we want to accomplish. Cut out words, pictures, phrases, right? Paste them on a vision board. That's actually what you do. But having at least words on paper, thoughts out of your head, clarification, things organized about what you are striving for is your blueprint then to figure out, okay, 
What do I need to do to get there? Once you've identified where you're trying to go, what you are hoping to have this outcome be, you then actually have to do the work. You can't just sit back and wait for the universe to magically manifest all of these things for you. Now, I know there are a lot of people who believe in manifestation. And yet when you dig into that, they're not just sitting around wishing for things to happen. Manifesting actually occurred because they did a whole bunch of things to make it happen. So we can put whatever word on it that we want to put on. The reality is there is going to be work involved. You are going to make choices every day. And every choice is either going to help you achieve this outcome or is going to prevent you from achieving the outcome. And when you embrace the idea that it is the cumulative effect of everything you do between now and then that's going to impact that outcome dramatically, you know that you have a lot of say in this because you are in charge of you. You're in charge of what you think, feel, say, and do. And if you devote intentional thoughts, intentional actions to the way you are spending and, and going through life, and those are aligned with what you're trying to accomplish and achieve and the way you're trying to live, you're very likely going to get pretty close to it. So there's a lot of process involved in this. And I know we don't like process. We like outcomes. And we would really prefer that that outcome occurs instantaneously with little to no effort. That's not reality, my friends. I'm sorry. I know. Here I am early in the year, dashing your hopes and dreams. That's what I do. Uh, it's not reality. Reality is outcomes occur because certain things did or didn't happen to influence that outcome. Now, obviously, there are going to be things that come into your life that you're not expecting, you didn't plan for, you didn't know what to do when you faced it. That's called life. Yes, that is what life is. You can only do what you can do. So you embrace the idea that you are in charge of your choices every day and you're going to do the best you can to be intentional with how you are devoting your time, money, and energy, devoting them in ways that align with your goals, align with your values, are going to help you achieve these accomplishments or have these experiences. And you're going to learn a lot about yourself along the way. Right? You, have, you probably have to do a bit of reflection, uh, a bit of evaluation. So if you have some goals in mind or there are some habits that you either want to engage in or maybe you want to modify or maybe you want to break, a really good question to ask yourself is, why am I not already doing what I want to do? There's a reason you're going to want to learn what those reasons are. Your obstacles are going to be there. And if you can identify a strategy around that obstacle, you'll know what to do and you'll get over it or around it, or you'll just scoot it out of your way and you'll get to where you want to go. If you don't identify obstacles, then you're going to look at one and be like, oh my gosh. And then you're going to go home. And then you're going to say, oh, well, I tried. I failed. It didn't work. No, none of those are true. You were faced with an obstacle. You didn't know what to do with it. And so you gave up. Choose to learn. Learn from it. Here's this situation. Let me evaluate what can I do in the face of this situation. One of the biggest obstacles that many of us get ourselves into is the all or nothing mindset. And I think for me specifically, this was a turning point in my approach. I was all about the resolution, make a resolution. Well, what am I going to resolve, right? Resolution kind of means that like I'm done, like I've resolved it, right? It's done. It's very finite. Now, some things are finite, right? If you're going to maybe run a marathon and you pick the marathon you're going to run, well, you either did or didn't run that marathon, okay? That's pretty cut and dry. A lot of things are not finite. You want to achieve a goal, but there's a good chance that you would like to sustain and or maintain that goal. So if we're phrasing this as a resolution, then 
that indicates that there's like an ending to it. And some of them are, a lot of them are not. And it was when I realized the things that I wanted to change really required a lot of maintenance. There was no ending to this. That's when I decided I need a new approach because in my mind, well, there's an end and I did it and now I'm done. Except that when you stop doing all the things that got you there, that result also goes away. And then you're like, oh, well, I tried and I failed. So depending on what the actual thing is, there might be maintenance involved, right? And so when you're thinking about how you're going to go about achieving, accomplishing, setting yourself up for success, keep in mind that the path and the strategy is going to be different based on the actual thing you're, you're determining that you want to do. Also ask yourself, why? Why is this important to you? So I'm going to give you a little story. I just did a, a vision board workshop here locally in Denver for a group of people. And a gal had put on her vision board a picture of a woman riding her bike. And so I asked her, what does that mean? Why is that on your vision board? And she said, I want to try to ride my bike to work next summer. Okay, so I am going to dissect that so that you can get an idea of how to think through your own things to set yourself up for success. So I'm going to try to ride my bike to work next summer. I just needed to confirm, do you have a bike? Yes, I have a bike. Okay, great. You want to try to ride it. Does that mean you have to learn how to ride it? No, I know how to ride my bike. Okay, cool. Don't need to take bike lessons. What would prevent you from riding your bike? Well, I don't like to get hot and sweaty and then have to be at work. Okay. How far is your bike ride? How long will it take you? Mm, I don't really know. It's about three miles. I don't know how long that takes. Okay. I know a little bit about bikes and mileage, and my guess is it will not take you that long, and it probably won't get you hot and sweaty, but maybe you set some time aside to test it out so that you're prepared for that. Okay. Great. What does next summer mean? Like, when are we starting this? What's the date? Because we live in Colorado. I mean, you could probably ride your bike in April on some days. It'll be gorgeous. You could probably ride your bike in October. It'll be gorgeous. So what does next summer mean? Let's have a start date and maybe like a, a buffer end date. I think June. Yeah, I'll start in June. June 1st. Okay, great. Is June 1st even a work day? I don't know. I haven't looked at a calendar. She should probably look at that. And then, yeah, maybe I can go through September. Okay, great. June through September. What is kind of a goal? How many days between June and September would you feel accomplished it having had written it that many days? Well, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. Okay, well, we should probably think about that because we have to have a way to measure this, right? Because, I mean, you could ride it once and say, oh, look at me. I rode my bike to work once. Are you going to feel satisfied and accomplished with that? Maybe. I don't know. These are just questions you want to ask yourself. Okay, so we're going to start riding our bike in June. Is your bike ready to go? You can just pop it out. June, go. Oh, no, I need to get it tuned up. Oh, okay. You're probably going to need to get that bike in the shop no later than late April because they are going to be way backed up. And if you want to ride your bike in June, you're going to have to get that appointment into the shop and, and get it tuned up. Do you know where to take your bike to get it tuned up? No, I have no idea. Oh, well, you're going to probably need to start researching well before April where you are going to take your bike to get it tuned up so that you can get the appointment, get your bike in by April so that it's done by June so you can ride your bike. Right? So all of these nitty gritty, annoying details are incredibly important. Otherwise, she puts this, I want to try to ride my bike to work on a vision board. And then it's June and, oh, it's so nice out. Oh, I wish I could ride my bike, but it's not tuned up and I'm not ready. Or, oh, my bike is ready, but, oh, I feel like it's going to be hot and I don't want to get sweaty, so I'm not going to ride it. Not knowing that her three-mile bike ride would not get her hot and sweaty. And then we would go to the vision board workshop next year and I'd say, did you ride your bike to work? And she would say, no. It just, it didn't happen. Oh, no. It didn't happen because you didn't set yourself up to make it happen. So I give you that story to help outline for you how we do or don't become successful, right? Things don't just magically happen or for 
some unknown reason not happen, everything we do is going to impact what that outcome is going to be. And if it's important enough to make it on a vision board or that you want to reflect on it at the end of the year, then you probably will devote some time and energy to set yourself up for success. So the why, right? This is so critical. Why? I asked her, why do you want to ride your bike to work? I think it'd be nice to spend some more time outside and to start my day doing something active. Why would that be nice? Tell me more. Well, I live in a beautiful state. And I know I'm not getting the maximum benefit of this place I live. And I know I would be energized and really feel good physically and mentally about myself to start my day. And I think I'd probably be a happier person and maybe more productive. And that's always good. And I think that would lead to great things. Okay, great. So you have your why, right? Your personally meaningful reason for why you are going to do hard things. Because anything that's a goal, an accomplishment, an experience, whatever it is, a habit change, an implementation, it's hard. If it wasn't hard, we'd just do it, right? It's hard. It's going to require sacrifice. Every choice has a consequence. And if you really want a certain outcome, you're probably going to sacrifice other things in order to devote time, money, and energy to this thing to get that outcome that you want. And if you don't have a really good reason for diverting resources, you're not going to divert resources. You're just going to spend them over here or spend them mindlessly or maybe not spend them at all. So tap into your why. That personally meaningful reason. Why is this important to you? And drill down into the details, the super deep, dark, nitty gritty reason, right? Know that there really is no pressure. I think we get to this point in the year and everybody's making their resolutions and setting their intentions and outlining their goals to achieve and be more and be better and do more and be bigger. And, and that's awesome. I do it. I definitely do. And yet it's totally okay if you don't want to do that, right? Maybe you're just not in the space to do it. Maybe you had a really difficult year and you just want to rest. That's good. That's your intention to rest, right? Maybe, I don't know, you're just not in a space where you really are motivated to do much. I would say, check yourself. If you're not motivated, there might be some other things that we can address and help you because a human really does want to thrive. It really does want to have something to strive for. It wants to have a sense of accomplishment and purpose and fulfillment, have a sense of community and contribution, right? That is how we feel good about ourselves. And these are all intentional ways to challenge yourself. So if you can dictate your challenges, rather than just wait around for life to throw challenges at you, which it will, if you can dictate your challenges, you are actually offering yourself the opportunity to feel accomplished, to feel purpose, to feel successful, to feel like you matter, like you have something to contribute, something to be proud of. And the more of those things that you have for you, the better human you are, the healthier, happier version of you that you are, probably benefiting everyone and everything around you. So if you have maybe given up on setting goals or trying to modify habits, I would say don't give up. It's probably just a function of not having the right approach and, and not really knowing the right strategy. Once you give up, we have just resigned ourselves to where we are. If there is anything in your life that you are not 100% satisfied with, physical health, mental health, emotional health, your relationships, your finances, your accomplishments, your experiences, if there's anything that's out there that you would still like to have or you would like to improve on, make that list. This is not to say, oh gosh, I'm not good enough. This is just to say, here I am. Here's what I'd like to do to improve. Here's where I think I would benefit if I did something different or if I had a different outcome. Here are experiences I really would like to have. 
here are accomplishments I want to achieve. It's just evaluating. That's it. Gives us, you know, a nice little picture of what is it? And then maybe you pick one thing. We don't need to get overwhelmed. You don't need to do all the things. In fact, if you try to do all the things, there's a good chance you're not going to do any of them. So embrace small things, recognizing that there is tremendous power in the cumulative effect of a whole bunch of small things. I know we like the flashy, dancy, sparkly outcome, right? Oh, that's so look at that. Something to look at and see. It's not super sexy to celebrate, oh, I drank my water today. And yet, if that is hard for you to get enough water into your body and you are consistently accomplishing drinking water, that's a big deal. You should be proud of it and celebrate it because you know you're doing something good for you. So find those small things that really are going to have big impact. Don't get bogged down by what someone else is doing, what someone else's goals are, somebody else's achievements are, right? Let's just focus on you. If you find inspiration comparing yourself to others, then continue. Most people end up feeling less than or feeling a little bit deflated or demoralized or feeling like, well, I can never do that. So why bother trying anything? And if it really isn't motivating and inspiring you, then why are we spending time on it? I can look at somebody and celebrate what they're doing and say, wow, that's amazing. Good job, you. And then I can look at me and say, what do I want to do? What am I capable of? What is my capacity? Be realistic with your capabilities and your capacity. We're all different. I don't have the capability and capacity that Sasha has. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you. I have different capabilities that she doesn't have. She has so many things that I don't have. And I am okay with that. I'm not trying to be Sasha. I have different capabilities and capacity than I had last year. Certainly have different ones than I had five years ago. And who knows what it's going to be in March, what my capabilities and capacity will be in March. Because you don't know what you don't know. All you know is what you can do with what you have right now. And if you recognize you have more, you're ready for more, you have capacity, then let's do it. If you recognize that, eh, I think I'm kind of good to just coast. I'm good to maintain. I'm good to ease off the gas. Let's do that. There is no right or wrong to any of this. What I want people to do, however, is be very intentional because I don't want you to take the foot off the gas and then get to November and be like, oh, I wish I would have. I would have, could have, should have. Right? You can't. You can't would have, could have, should have. It's too late. You can shift, right? Maybe you need the foot off the gas now and maybe you hit March and you're like, hmm, I think I'm ready. I'm ready for more. I'm ready to do something. Always be checking in with yourself, right? There is no... We must only do this in January. Honestly, you probably would benefit by doing this pretty consistently. You are your own project. And maybe we take that project year by year. Maybe we take that project month by month, day by day. I don't know. But you're the project manager. So be checking in and tuning in, evaluating. Be a very active participant in your life. Because you don't want to get to the end and say, oh, I should have done that. I would have done that. I wish I could have done that. Right? It's too late. What it could have, should have. It's one of the worst places to be in. We can avoid that by being intentional and learning as we go and not judging ourselves or others, being curious about ourselves and others. Awesome. Judgment of ourselves and others. Not super awesome. In fact, <laughs> not great, not helpful, not necessary. So choose to be curious, choose to learn and grow, whatever that means, at your own pace, at the pace that feels good to you, that feels comfortable, but also recognize if the pace is not right, maybe it is too slow, then speed it up. Maybe there's too much, slow it down. 
this is all about you being your best being. That's it. And a lot of this really just takes time. It takes time and willingness and, and dedication to care about yourself, to care enough about yourself to learn about yourself, to do it with kindness, with compassion, with grace, with gratitude, with honesty. And when you recognize that, yes, here's where I am, but here's where I want to go, well, then let's figure out how to get there. And whether it's you know through coaching or through your therapist or through your spiritual guide, your priest, your pastor, your best friend, you know, the virtual vision board workshop, your EAP at work, whatever it is, there is support everywhere for everyone and for everything. There is. Maybe not as much as you need to get you exactly where you want to go, but I promise you there is some type of support that will help you get closer. You just have to be willing to use it. You have to invest your time, your energy, maybe your money in your project. That's if you want to go somewhere different. If you are 100% happy with everything you are, then we got to maintain, which also takes work. Right? That's the thing. We have this idea that once I get there, well, I can just stay because look at me. I'm where I want to be. Except guess what? Life doesn't work that way. Life is constantly changing. Things in life are constantly changing. You are changing every single minute. You're changing. Things around you are changing every single minute. So if you think, oh, I'm good, I don't need to do anything, keep checking. <laughs> keep checking because all of a sudden, wait, I'm not good anymore. How did that happen? Well, it happened because you decided you were good and you checked out. That's, you know, part of the journey of life. That's the reality of it is it is constant attention. Self-care requires you to actually take care of yourself. Achieving your goals requires you to actually do things to achieve your goals. And so I wanted to start off our podcast year with just kind of these thoughts that I have all the time. I teach and talk about these things, but I don't know that I've ever really gone into detail on the podcast about it. So hopefully that gave you a few things to think about. Hopefully it inspired you. I don't want to be too tough on anybody. And at the same time, I want people to get to have their most full and fulfilling experience. And I know I spent way too many years in woulda, coulda, shoulda mode, in it's not fair, I can't do that, why bother trying, oh, I'm going to try, and then, oh, it didn't work out. And it wasn't until I really dug deep into all of this that everything changed. And I'm telling you, it is so worth it. We get one shot on this planet. You know, however many days that ends up being, nobody knows. And if you can do the best you can to be very clear and intentional with how you're spending your days, your weeks, your months, your years, you're going to get to that point where you're going to be pretty satisfied. And what else can we ask for, right? That is all I have. If you didn't listen to the recap, just to let you know, we are going to be publishing every other week. The word for me that I've chosen for 2024 is simplify. And part of simplifying for me is just to let the foot off the gas on a few things. So I am eternally grateful for all of you listeners who continue to listen weekly. I hope you'll continue to listen bi-weekly. We're going to have great guests. Sasha will be back in and out throughout the year as well. Of course, you can always reach out. You can join programs. You can connect on socials. We're here no matter what. If you really miss us, you can start over at the beginning, play an old episode in the off weeks. There's certainly no shortage of content for you to get into your brain. But absolutely appreciate all of you and, and really excited to get to forge ahead for 2024. The Virtual Vision Board Workshop, I'm telling you, I have amazing guests. So some of them have been podcast guests and they're going to give you some incredible insight and inspiration to help you maybe find a new approach or, or get a little bit of motivation to do something differently. 
or to continue on this journey that you've already devoted so much time and attention to. So I do hope you'll join us for that. It is virtual, like I said. It will also be recorded. So if you can't make the whole thing or any of it, you dip in and out. Anybody who registers will get a link to the recording so you can play it over and over and over and really set yourself up to have a fantastic, full, and, and fabulous 2024. That is all, everybody. You know it is now your turn. You get to go and be a better being. Thank you for listening to the Be A Better Being podcast. Michelle and Sasha hope that what you heard today inspires you to embrace this journey of life with an open mind, a kind heart, and a willingness to learn and evolve. If you enjoyed the content, please help spread their message by subscribing, sharing, and leaving a five-star review. If you have a show topic idea or would like to be a guest, please visit betterbeings.net and fill out a contact form. Until next time, go and be a better being.